I see. Hey guys, welcome back to another day, another adventure. But as you can see, I'm covered in sweat. I've already been working out for an hour. Um, the other video got, got, got cut off, but yeah, I've been working out. I've been really been to the gym every single day for 40 days. And as you can see, I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, but yeah, I saw a video about Brett, Brett Maverick. He did 30 days, uh, 100 push ups, 100 sit ups, you know, 100 squats, you know, a bit like a One Punch Man. And I thought I could do that easily. I've been working out since you know 1999. I first went to a gym like the year 2000. Uh, this is like 14, um, oh, yeah, 12 or 12, 14 at the time or something. I started working out and yeah, so I started working out every day. I did kickboxing, I used to do kickboxing all day, every day. Um, so I went to the gym. I started going to the gym maybe 2000, 2001, and uh, I started taking it seriously around 2003. And by 2005, I was doing kickboxing from the moment I woke up till all the way now, I was non-stop moving, I was obsessed. I wanted to be like Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was my hero. I wanted to be just like Bruce Lee. And uh, he used to train eight hours a day. So I thought, okay, I'll do that, I'll train eight hours a day. I had no idea how, how sick I was making myself though, because I used to think, oh, Bruce Lee's got no fat in his body, so I'll just run, I'll just run. I used to do cardio exercises all the time. And I kind of uh, stopped doing, you know, a lot of weight exercises. And uh, I weighed about eight and a half stone, because I realized Bruce Lee, he weighed 135 pounds. And I, my brain wasn't working, I wasn't thinking straight, because I thought, well, I, I'm taller than Bruce Lee, I'm like, you know, I'm six foot, I'm six foot, and he's like, maybe this tall, and he weighed um, 135 pounds, so I thought, okay, I'll skip, I'll run all day, and I'll keep moving. I was moving all day, and I really made myself sick. I had nosebleeds, I used to faint all the time. I used to, I went to jiu-jitsu practice, kickboxing practice, and there's a few times where I fainted. Um, but yeah, I think this is the longest I've ever been with uh, training. Um, because I was started off in, I was in Rio de Janeiro. I've traveled five different cities as well the past month. I was started off in Rio de Janeiro. Then, yeah, I was training 40 days ago uh, when I first started training before my last rest day. I was training outdoors, you know, in the, in the beach. Like if you check, check out my old video, you've probably seen me training at the beach. I'm doing the, the bodyweight squats, which I do, which I said is the, is the best thing for losing the love handles. You know, best thing for having a good foundation. And there, I look a lot more, a lot more slimmer because I was, I was vegetarian. I was eating eggs. Um, but yeah, I saw Brett Maverick, and I thought he's, he did 100 push-ups on the silbs every day. And I thought, with me, my athletic background, I could do that easily. I mean, I could do that within a, an hour, but then I'd be bored for the rest of the day. So yeah, I thought I'd do, do, do kind of do the gym every single day. I think I've had one day, one day, where I've not come to the gym. But on that day off, I did 100 push-ups, 100 squats, 100 sit-ups. You know, I just stayed indoors and had the shower. Uh, I couldn't make it to the gym that day, but yeah, I did 100 push-ups and squats on it. But the first, the first 30 days, they were okay, they were fine. But now, I go to the gym and I'm like, I'm just looking in the mirror, I, like I sit over there and I'm just like, oh, I find the motivation on my phone, and you know, finding the motivation. So yeah, I think you do need a day off. Or just a day where you just do 100 push-ups on the squats and just, um, but yeah, I can't, even if on my day off, I just still feel itchy. Because I do no fap, I do semen retention, I've been doing semen retention practicing nofap since the year 2000 and um, yeah I first started it off started team retention when I watched the film 40 days and 40 nights and I just I was all, always about challenging myself I'm pushing myself like I watched Bruce Lee in from in 1999 and I thought that's who I want to be like that's who I want to be like but mum was always saying like oh no Bruce Lee died at the age of 32 and I kind of see why because yeah I did have when I started training like uh, by the age of 15, 16, I realized I had all this energy. I could move. As soon as I, as soon as I woke up, I got up out of bed. I did punching. I get kicking. I used to wake up and like the first thing I did when I woke up was just <laughs> I used to punch the air in my bed. And then I used to get up and I used to have a quick breakfast. I used to eat just like Bruce Lee. Look at Bruce Lee's schedule and thought I want to do that. But I had college to do. I had driving lessons at university. I did other things. I had to work as well. And I thought I could still do that. You know, I was always about not putting limitations on myself, but. I did make myself sick at one point. I was really frail. I weighed about eight stone. Um, I weighed less than Bruce Lee, and Bruce Lee is this tall. You know, it's much smaller than anyone. Uh, you know, you know, for a Chinese guy, you know, they're usually about that big. But he was all muscle, and that's. And I had headaches like him. I used to foot punches. I used to be, and the headaches were just blinding. Like it felt like a metal plate was in the middle of my head, and someone was doing that with it, or someone was like sorry for my brain. Yeah, and I realized Bruce Lee had a brain edema like that and he was constantly asking for headache pills. And he had, he had the same thing, and, but because I'm so headstrong, I thought, I forget about it, but mum was like, be careful, you're gonna die, you're gonna die like Bruce Lee. 
and uh, I just I just didn't listen to anyone. I didn't listen to anyone. I was too headstrong. Uh, but then I finally went to university. I kind of pulled back a bit. Had a step back. I went to had pizza. I went out partying. I started to experience other life for the first time. Uh, even I went to an all boys school as well. And the so from the ages of like uh, all from the age of birth to sixteen. I never, you know, talked to much girls. I didn't talk to any girls at all. So by the time I went to college, when I was 16, um, from 16 to 17 to 18, 19, I was at college for two years, and me and my best friend, we went to an all-boys school together, and we were sitting next to these girls, and we were literally, like, sweating and shaking, like, what are these things next to these girls? And we were, like, physically shaking. But at the same time, I didn't realize at the time, but I was teaching kickboxing by the age of 18. And um, I also attracted a lot of girls, like uh, I remember, but I remember my sister was like four years younger than me, and she uh, she had a friend. Um, all her school friends came to my kickboxing class, and one of her school friends were like begging my mum for my, for my phone number. I didn't realize at the time. I didn't realize that girls never do that. Girls never beg anyone for the phone number. It's usually uh, the other way around. But also because that's because I was fo focused on doing kickboxing all day, always on myself. I didn't think about girls or anything like that. I didn't think about, I didn't speak to girls properly until the age of like 21. And that's when I went to university. And then when I dropped out of university, that's when I started to, because my dad didn't teach me anything about girls. I mean, no one taught me anything about, you know, this is where girls go. So I was just went to, I went to the army cadets, I had kickboxing, I had jujitsu, I have all these male things. People used to make fun of me and said, oh, you do jujitsu? I was in high school, people, you do, the, you, I was in the Navy, the Navy cadets is like a junior cadets, junior army RAF cadets. And I did that every um, Wednesday night after high school. And it's all the, you know, that and the, the guns and shooting the R2 rifle, learning how to do map reading, I was in scouts as well. So I never had any time for girls. As soon as I went home from high school, I had English essays to do, I had jujitsu, I had RAF cadets. And uh, all my, everyone in high school used to be funny and say, oh, you're gonna be like the, the next James Bond. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> but obviously then I went to university and uh, things started to go downhill. Cause I started, you know, that's when I was first introduced to girls. Everyone else introduced girls by the age of eight or 12 or 14. But I was like maybe 21 when I first started to know what girls were about. And I thought, oh, girls were all nice and sugar and spice and everything, everything nice. And I was so naive and so stupid. And I went down that trap. I started to go downhill. I started to lose focus on myself. I started to start doing kickboxing, started to get depression. You know, I, don't do, I don't believe in depression. I just believe being deluded, being led astray. And I, my trainer was always, you know, Stay away from girls, you know. No, he wasn't like that because I was still, still young, but he was like, you know, stay focused, come to training. Because I remember at kickboxing training, the girl, this girl wanted my phone number, and the um, the my trainer was like, you know, stay stay away from us. You know, so he's like trying to be, be, be a bridge between me and the girls, you know. And I totally understand that now, because um, yeah, that's when I attracted the most girls. Like girls used to ask for my phone number, and I, I you know, that would never happen, you know. I, I, you know, um, we'll beg for your phone number unless you're like a, a superstar or something. So anyways, let's get back. I've had a, had a good rest. I've had like, I've just been talking for myself. I've had my five minute rest. But I've been working out for an hour now and I've done 40 days nonstop working out the whole body. Full full body workout, which I won't recommend because I'm exhausted. As you can see, I'm just talking now because I'm, I'm depleted. I'm feeling really, um, really, uh, Depleted, un unmotivated. But anyway, let's finish this workout. This workout. Yeah, I was in. I was in Paraguay last year. And I used to work out every single day uh, with my shirt off in the sun because I don't like gym. Like gyms, like gyms like this are okay because they're really quiet. There's no one here. But I, I hate the gym environment because it's just usually jacked up guys trying to look good. Oh, you know, especially if you go to America, just trying to intimidate you. Or oh, in South America, especially because they hate you know they hate foreigners, so they're usually the guy. He's just trying to make the gringo look bad. But yeah, I used to go outdoors because I used to feel much more alive. Uh, in the sun, and uh, train in the park, do lots of push-ups, squats. Because my body felt more agile. 
by just a natural bodyweight exercises. And I was on my way back from training. I uh, did my outdoor training on Sunday. I'm a tether day, my yoga mate. You know, cleansed my whole inside, my whole It felt great. I was walking back. I was walking through downtown Aston Sean, which was really quiet. And some guy stopped me. He said, hey, you've got, you've got your shirt off. Why have you, why have you got your shirt off? He's like, well, it's, it's a free country. It's a free world. Well, why don't I have my shirt off? Have some sun. And he was like, he said, oh, well, what about society? What will society think? And I couldn't believe he said that. A straight male was saying, oh, what about society? And I was walking away from him. And I said, what about society? I said, fuck society. I mean, society is all about lies. It's all about, this guy was like, you know, and that's what's been pussified. Everyone in South America, especially South America, they're all following these rules. They only care about what people think because all they care about is Instagram. Even everyone's on Instagram, everyone cares about what people think, especially in Paraguay, because it's, you ask anyone in Aston Sean and they say, Oh, be careful, Ashton Sean's good, it's great for now, but he's so paranoid. The, uh, the environment, everyone is always, everybody knows everybody in such a small city. Everybody knows everybody. So the only release you can get, I mean, the cities are dead. From Monday to Friday, you go out in the city in the daytime, you approach anyone on the street, you can't, it's just dead. But, you, Young people, we need adventure, we need fire, we need something. We can't just, that's what life's all about. That's where life is. Adventure and fire and having something to, something that just, isn't just a regimented thing that everybody else does, being robots. But Friday and Saturday night, best nights I've ever had out. Um, I haven't been out in Colombia, so I think Colombia might be better because everyone's saying Colombia's good. Paraguay, Friday, Saturday nights, they were amazing. Because it's a really, relaxed kind of city so you can enjoy a Friday Saturday out with people being nice whereas in Brazil you have to worry about if you go to Copacabana or Benin you have to worry about people mugging you or robbing you it's like that in Asunción but only around 3 a.m. or you know 5 a.m. walking back at midnight but yeah Friday Saturday night in Asunción it's like being a celebrity if you're white I remember walking to a club and uh, they're like oh kiss me kiss me kiss me I've been a few times, you know, in, in uh, Barrio Constitution. I was on the way to Barrio Constitution, my favorite club. I'm out of breath, as you can see, I've been working out for 40 days, non stopping. Um, and girls, I think three times it's happened, girls stopped me on the street and said, oh, kiss me, give me a kiss, give me a kiss. <laughs> and that's because, obviously, it doesn't happen just because you're white, it happens if you look after yourself. And obviously, I trained every single day, I worked out every single day, so, before I go out, I'd always train. I do at least an hour's training before I go out. <clears throat> but yeah, Friday Saturday night, it's like being a celebrity because that's the only outlet that those the young people have there because it's run by everywhere you go in the city. It's like oh, run by old people, you know, old people like thinking, oh, like, and they all know everybody. So if you go to a hotel room to sleep, you know, someone who works at that hotel will know somebody's cousin. And their cousin will say, oh, this girl went to this, this uh, hotel with this guy. So it's so paranoid and it's, it's conservative and they're all about, you know, values. And once they know that, the kind of reputation goes downhill. That's why I hope Paraguay gets developed because we need freedom. We all have this natural urge sooner or later, which takes over, so. <clears throat> And obviously, this guy on the street, he was like, I was, I was just walking on the street like this. And he came up to me and he was like, hey man, how you doing? You, you got your shirt off? Why you got your shirt off? It's hot, it's sunny. In, in Paraguay, it is roasting. It, people think Brazil is hot, but Paraguay is really sweaty weather like this. You just have about five showers a day. Well, three showers a day, I think I had the most. And, yeah, I've been working out in the sun, uh, my feet be touching the earth, I've been feeling alive, I've been feeling great. Uh, I'm in the gym now, but I much prefer working out in the sun because it's just a natural environment, you need the sun and nature. I have my tether day, my yerba mate, cleanse my organs. You need to go to the loo straight away because tether day, yerba mate just cleanses everything. And this guy, yeah, he just said, 
he came up to me and said, um, why don't you get a shit off? And I went, oh, you know, it's sunny, why, why not have a shit off? You know, it's, it's sunny, it's a free, free world. And this is, you know, this is supposed to be a free country, a free world. And he said, oh, what about society? What would society think? And I was like, fuck society, you know what? You can't, if you're gonna obey these society rules, then you're not gonna get anywhere because it's just gonna, it's just an empty life. You might as well be a robot like everybody else. And uh, the whole reason society is just to get you to consume, just to buy their products, whatever they're selling, either their drugs, their system, whatever, they, whatever they're selling, just to make you, uh, you know, the world is running jealousy. The world is run so if you're, in, you're working a nine to five, you're working, you're being a robot like everybody else, everyone feels happy, everyone's secure. Everyone is like, oh, I'm really happy, you know, this guy is not achieving better than me. I feel good about myself. The whole world is run on that. And once you see that, and once you realize that, and once you rise above that, that starts the beginning of your life. That's when your life is going to start. That's when your freedom is going to start. And I feel sorry for most young people these days because they, they, they're growing up by Instagram. They're given a phone by the age of um, 10 or eight or whatever. And all they care about is fitting in. And that is the least, that is the most pathetic way of living ever. Because nobody, the only person who wants, you'll meet maybe five people in your life, in your entire life. If you live for 100 years, you'll probably meet five people who will want for you what you want for yourself, who want the good for you, who want you to live the best life without regrets. 99% of people you meet will only want you to be less than them, be miserable. Be miserable of them or to be less than them. So the only thing you can trust it's your fire within. When you're alone and you feel that fire within and you get an inspiration, that's the only thing you can trust. Everything else is just to make you a consumer, to lead you astray.